time, with God's men, with God's resources. Yes, that's who we are. That's who we are. 2024, one more time. Say, made by mercy. 2024, say, made by mercy. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Again, I want to tell you that you should be very aware of the grounds that you stand. That in the midst of doctrine coming to you this morning is a heightened prophetic grace. Amen. We are experiencing in our church, like never before in the history of this church, a level of the prophetic. Praise God. And that's why I want you to be very conscious. Here and here. Know when to pick your engrafted word. Amen. Oh, don't be rowdy, but it's okay to shout during the word of God. Amen. 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 Receive your engrafted words. God's word will come to you today. Can we have the confession before the word? Mr. Sound, can I have my lapel mic working now? Hallelujah. Is the confession up now? All right, let's pray it with conviction and with boldness. One, two, three, go. God is bringing my way and I receive a name and the enablement to do that. Amen. 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 Now how many of you believe that God prospers people? You know, listen. Beyond the things that you say, beliefs are not things that you own. Beliefs are things that own you. Beliefs are things you give permission to own and to control you. That's why your beliefs are in your subconscious. They are not in your conscious. You can be saying something consciously with your lips, but your heart, it is in a different place. It is what is in your heart. Do you get what I'm saying? Jesus said, oh, generation of vipers, how can you be evil in your heart? Think that you are going to use your words to speak life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So when we begin to talk about prosperity, there's... There are mindsets that we must correct. So I ask you again. How many of you believe in your heart that God prospers people? It's one thing to say you believe, but I want you to be convinced of it this morning. That's how we are going to start. Genesis 39 and verse 2. The Bible says, and God was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man by reason of God being with him. So I ask you again, how many of you believe that God prospers people? I believe. Verse 3 of this thing you will see. It It says, when his master saw that the Lord was with him and made him prosper in all. How many things? How many of you believe that God prospers people? Let's see one more, Isaac. Genesis 26 verse 12. Then Isaac sold in that land. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord began to prosper. Are you seeing your Bible? Who began to prosper him? Who began to prosper him? And the Lord began to prosper him. I like the next thing. Can you read it? And continued what? Is it not there? No wonder they are looking at me. Genesis 26. Madufor, where are your guys now? This one is have media. All right, let's go. Let's read together. Genesis 26. Let's start again from verse 12. One, two, three, go. Mm-hmm. Well, what's going on? They changed it. No, 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 it's best. Just give them the new King James. King James. Oh, no, I want you to see it. Why don't you see it? After I will read, you sit down. New King James. Can we have New King James now? Is he up now? All right, let's read again. Sorry, again. let's start again. One, two, three, go. God bless you. God give you guys grace. Can we start it now? Is it good now? 
All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. Is that, is that the New King James? Okay, don't worry, relax. Let me read New King James to you. God will give them the wisdom to do it. New King James. Then Isaac sold in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. He says, the man began to prosper. Continued prospering until he became very prosperous. That's why I want to show you. God blessed him. By virtue of God, the blessing of the Lord make it. You get it? The Lord blessed him. By virtue of that, he began to prosper. And continued to prosper. Do you understand it? That's increased what? See, he became, the Bible says a person is very prosperous. Isaac, a whole country looked at Isaac and said to Isaac, thou art surely mightier than us. Eh? Ghana just looked at me and said, don't worry, thou art surely mightier than us. See, and he continued to prosper till he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of heads, and a great number such that the Philistines, a whole country, they envied him. How many of you believe that God prospers people? Do you believe it? Bible concerning Uzziah said in 2 Chronicles 26, 5, he said, and he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah, who had understandings in the visions of God. And as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. God made him to prosper. So let it be settled in your heart. God prospers men. Did you hear that? Now, you're not, don't, don't tell anybody. Because what we're talking about is your internal subconscious belief system. Do you get it? Say to yourself, Toborek to David. Convince yourself, God prospers people. Say, God prospers people. I begin to say, as you sit down, I live in prosperity. I live in super abundance. I believe in prosperity. I believe in the overflow nature of God. I believe God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I can ever ask. More than I can ever think. I believe that God is more than enough. So sit down saying it. I believe in prosperity. There's a reason I want you to be saying it. Because what you don't believe, you can never receive. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? What you don't believe, you can never receive. In Mark 11, 23, the scripture brother Hagen wrote, it says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou moved and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Be, are you getting the idea now? He shall not doubt in his heart. Believing all that he said, he said he shall have whatsoever he saith. So you have to believe. Say, I believe in prosperity. Say, I believe in prosperity. I can't hear the church. I want you to say it loud. Say, I believe in prosperity. One of the things we established on Wednesday is that we are not chasing after wealth. It is chasing us. I say it is chasing us. That's why anywhere we are, Isaiah 66, 12, he said, I will cause prosperity to flow towards you like a river. And then the glory of the Gentiles will come to you like a flow, flowing stream. I will cause prosperity to flow towards you. So you will not spend your life in the chase of money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you hear what I said? Yes, some people knew when to say amen. I said you will not spend your life in the chase of money. Amen. One of the things I told you on Wednesday, and God will establish it even more today, is this. Money should not be why you wake up. Money should not be why you wake up. Money should not be the reason why you are running in the money. This is not money. No, you don't live for money. You don't live for money. Praise God. Praise God. The sound is good. I want to hear your voice. Praise God. Say, prosperity flow towards me like a river. 
So if in Isaiah 66 we see that God is the one who is causing prosperity to flow towards me, then it's rest assured that God does not hate prosperity. God is not against prosperity. In Psalms 35, 27, a key scripture from last week's Sunday, I'll read it again. He said, let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause? Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants? The Lord has pleasure. It means the Lord will have a displeasure when his servants do not prosper. Do you get it now? The Lord has what? Pleasure when his servants prosper. How many of you are servants of the Lord? How many of you are servants of the Lord? And in Psalms 25 and verse 12, we've, get, we've got to see that we dwell in prosperity and our seeds shall inherit the earth. Say it out of your mouth. I dwell in prosperity. Say it with conviction. Say it louder. I dwell in prosperity. I dwell in prosperity. So you have to be ready to confess with me. Say, I dwell in prosperity. Let's make sure we're not around you today so that the word of God can flow. Distractions, movements actually reduces and kills utterance. Amen. 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 So last Sunday, we began to see that there are two streams and two systems of wealth in the world. Two systems of wealth in the world. Indeed, actually, there are two kingdoms in this world. You know, so courage. You know, Jesus used to say words like, the kingdom of God is like. So, Jesus used the of God as an adjective of description to talk about a particular kingdom. So, the kingdom of God. What that should tell you naturally, there's another kingdom. The principles Jesus was teaching in his day were principles of the kingdom of who? Of God. Does anybody understand that? What does that tell you that the devil has a kingdom on this earth? Yes. What is a kingdom? What is a kingdom? What is a kingdom? Just take it from the name itself. A kingdom is the area a particular king has domain or dominion over. Do you understand it? It's the area a king has dominion over. And whether you like it or not, the Bible calls the devil the prince of the air. The prince of this world. So he is a sense of a king. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it means there are areas that he has dominion over. He has a domain that he dominates. So there are two streams of wealth. I said there is a blessing system. And there is the Babel system. Some may call it Babylonian, but it's the same thing. And one of the things we saw in Proverbs 10, 22, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. What that tells you is there is another blessing, another system that can make rich, but will add sorrow. Are you getting the idea? It's a contract. It says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. And it, he added what? No sorrow. Oh, let me tell you. The devil makes rich, but he adds what? He adds what? He adds what? We saw Paul telling Timothy that the love of money is the root of all evil. And it is that love of money that some have chased. And they have erred from the faith, piercing themselves with many sorrows. Piercing themselves with many sorrows. So the blessing system is God's system where God endows his people with prosperity, with wealth. And he says, in that system, there is no sorrow. Now one thing we must now indicate here by way of importance is this. When it comes to prosperity, it is about 
Who is Lord? Who is a question of lordship when it comes to prosperity? It is a question of who is your Lord. By the grace of God, I pray that at the end of this service, you would have defined for yourself who is your Lord. So I want you to write in your book as we begin our discourse. Put your name. Put your name. Yes, in your sermon notes, there should be places where your name is. Amen. There should be places where you're asking yourself real questions. Your sermon notes should be interactive. And now that I'm here, get a note. Get a proper, decent, a note that befits your stature. A note that befits your own pedigree. You are a chick, get a chick note. Amen. You are a bros, get a bros note. But make sure you have a note. Listen to me. It is impossible to be established in doctrine without a note. Without note taking, you can never be established in the word of God. Without note taking, you are just assuming you know things. In my secondary school, it's, in fact, it was many years after secondary school, I was clearing out some of my books and I saw where my English teacher wrote in my notes. The faintest handwriting is sharper than the best memory. The faintest handwriting is sharper than the best memory. There are many things you assumed that you knew, but you forgot. But there are things that you wrote, when you saw them, you can't even remember when you wrote them, how you wrote them. Do you get it? The faintest handwriting is sharper than the best memory. You are saved in Christ, you are saved. Not writing can never take your salvation. However, not writing can impede your spiritual growth. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? No, don't stop writing on your phones. Stop writing on your phones. That's how so many of you get distracted in the service. That's how you begin to check your Instagram during service. That's how you are replying WhatsApp message during service. The Sabbath must be kept holy. The principle of the Sabbath is that the time that you have apportioned to God, you must give to no other. The time that you have apportioned to God, you, the, you must give attention to nothing else and to no one else. So some of us are yet to understand Sabbath. And that's why you are not growing spiritually. Sabbath itself is a principle of consecration. This time, this portion, I will give to the Heavenly Father and I will give it to no man. Did you hear what I said? You know, the sad thing is you have believers who are friends with unbelievers, diabolic people. You can't call them when they are doing their rituals, but they can call you when you are in your service. Are you seeing the difference? If one of you is not serious, and it's obvious who. It's obvious who. It's obvious who. It's a, it's a lack of reverence for God, a lack of fear, even before reverence for God. That's why some people come to church, and during the service, you are slouching. You are slashing like this. If you visit your governor, your state governor, you will not slash like that. Let me tell you, sit upright. Pay rapt attention to the word of God. You hear what I'm telling you? Pay rapt attention to the word of God. Otherwise, you will not be established. Otherwise, you cannot grow spiritually. It's a lack of fear for God. That's why you'll be in his presence and you're pressing phone. You will never be in the shrine of Ogun and press your phone. You won't do that. So all of this is, is people who are untrained. But now you are receiving training. Amen. Amen. Keep the phone aside and focus on the word of God. And let me tell you, for a series like this, in fact, there's some people who I said the text message, I said, this is no ordinary season. This is no ordinary series. Bulk of the problem, I've heard many of you complain about, they are about money. Bulk of the challenges some marriages are having, money will take it away. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Money will take it away. So you need to come and establish yourself on God's perspective, covenant, and promise when it comes to the subject of prosperity. So back to the word of God. How many of you are ready for the word of God now? Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Everybody let everything else wait. I'm in a place where, you know, listen to me. You don't mess with your source. Is God your source? Is God your source? If you can't pay attention to him, he's not your source. You have another source. That's who you are talking to on the phone. Praise God. We have lots of time to do that. Once it's 12.30, take selfies till you quench. Huh? 
What is one o'clock post to midnight? But now is the time I've given to the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you have given this time to the Lord? God's time. God's time. And let's do God's thing. So I said, when it comes to the subject of the matter of prosperity, the question is, who is my Lord? My Lord. I was telling a few people yesterday, we say things like, we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. Many people, who they accepted is Savior, so they are saved. They've not accepted him as Lord. But what they do not understand is that the elders of the faith and the body of Christ, who tempt their phrase, are not stupid. He cannot be your Savior until he is your Lord. You hear what I'm telling you? He cannot be your Savior until he is your Lord. And it's important you begin to learn that if God is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. He does not want some of you. He wants everything. He wants all of you. So it's a question of who is Lord. Remember that the devil took Jesus. Go to Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. In the temptations of Jesus. The devil took Jesus up. And then he promised him the glories of the world. The glories of the world in that temptation there is the wealth of the kingdoms of this world. You see that now? He said, I will give you the glories of the world if you will bow down to me. Look at it. I will give you the kingdoms of this world if you make me your Lord. Are you all getting this? It's a question of who is Lord, if you just move two verses down, you will see it. Now, the person there. So, it's simple. When it comes to prosperity, it is about who is what? Lord. He said, I will give you these kingdoms and their glories if you will make me your Lord. So, ask yourself again, Toborre, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? Now, in the blessing system, Jesus is Lord. And please, you must understand what we mean when we say a person is your Lord. I talked before in this church, repetition to some, first time hearing for others, there is nothing like no Lord. Have you ever seen a movie where somebody said no Lord? There's absolutely nothing in this whole world like no Lord. The concept of Lord means the person is in charge, control, and in ownership of your will, your wants, your desire. So a person who wants to go to, let's say you want to go to Abuja. When your Lord said we are going to Lagos, the answer is what? Yes, Lord. So what is a Lord? Owner, controller of your wills, your wants, your desires. Are you all getting this? That's what makes him your Lord. So, that's why wives must understand the concept where submission flows from. That Sarah called her husband what? Lord. So, when we were growing up, there is a wedding song they used to sing. They don't sing it anymore. They fancied everything and some of them fancied away from meaning. But during marriage as children, some of us were in all those dancing groups. When somebody marries in church, yes, you wish to match in. And the matching song is, I'm going to meet my Lord, where he go, I will go, where he live, I will live, his people shall be mine. Yes. It's the wife that was cutting though. She's going to meet her who? Her Lord. Where the Lord goes, she will go. Oh, are you all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, you don't understand. When they went to marry wife for Isaac, excuse me, <coughs> when I went to marry wife for Isaac, when her father called her, the question she asked, he, she was asked is, will you go with this man? You are the one going with. The same context. Do you not know that you are not your own? That you have been bought with a price? The day he died for you, the day he took ownership of your will, the day you accepted the death on the cross, 
That's the day to all of his whims. You say, yes, Lord. So you must understand what Lord is. Lord is your director. Lord is your detector. Lord is to him or it that you cannot say no. So the devil says, I will give you all these things. Just make me your Lord. In the blessing system, Jesus is Lord. What does that mean by implication? We will see today by God's grace. It means that the way you would attain any form of financial increase must align with his principles, must follow his promise, must follow his rules. And please take note, there are rules. Oh, are you all hearing what I'm saying? There are what? Rules. There are rules. I want to tap the guy beside you. Tell him to raise his head. So I look at me. Open your eyes and keep looking at me. It will help you to save your life. There are rules. One of them is you cannot lie to gain anything financially. So in the blessing system, Jesus, his principles, his life, his way is your Lord. In the Babel system, basically, first of all, the devil is your Lord. You see what he was trying to do with Jesus. He said, bow to me. What that means is now, if in the blessing system, Jesus is your Lord, and by implication, you have to now go by the principles of Jesus. Therefore, in the Babel system, the devil has what? Principles. And one of the principles of the devil is that you can only go up by taking people down. Are, are you seeing it? You can only go up by stabbing other people. The devil is a thief. He doesn't come except but to steal, to kill, and to... So if you want to go up by the devil's principles, if you want to be wealthy by the Bible standard, you must kill. Character assassination is killing. You must steal. You must destroy. Are you getting the idea? So in the Bible system, there are two lords. Number one is the devil, as I just described. Number two is self. So somebody asked me, does it mean that, because in the Bible system, they begin to preach to you about self-actualization. There's a lot of self-help books. I you all hearing that? It's a self-help, self-guide to self, this self-made millionaire, self Listen, if you follow your word, first of all, in 2 Timothy 3, the first indication of the perilous time is self-love. Did you hear what I just said? The first indication that the end is near is what this self-love, self-love. What is self-love? At the root of it is selfishness. At the root of it, you are saying, it's all about me. And that is making you directly opposed to the Father. Why? We serve a self-centered God. It's all about Him. It cannot be all about God and all about you at the same time. It has to be about somebody. Self-actualization. You have to reach the zenith of your potential, OTK. So we're writing this self-help book so that you can, you know, you know thyself. Know thyself. Self? You know self? Self. Self is carnal. Self is evil. Self is in opposition with God. No good thing can come out of self. So we are trained to die to self. There is evil and jealousy and envy in self. If self is actualized, the world is destroyed. Oh, are you hearing what I'm telling you? If we all get up to actualize ourself, what it means is take what you love. You know all this maxim you see on social media? Life is short. Do what makes you feel good. Have you seen all those things? Listen to me. I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor of the church. If I do what makes me feel good, the world will be destroyed. Do you know what makes you feel good sometimes? Are you all getting this? 
So, and the apex of self-actualization is complete what? Decadence. Paul said the challenge he was having one time. He said, for all seek their own self. So the world is trying to tell you now to reach the zenith. No, God does not want you to reach the zenith of your potential. God, who gave you any form of gift, said you should use it to fulfill the call that he's put on your life. Oh, did you hear me? We are not seeking self-actualization. We are seeking fulfillment and completion of the assignment that he has given to us. That's why at the end of Paul's life, Paul didn't say, I have self-actualized. Paul said, I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. Are you seeing the difference here now? So what is this thing they call, they call up self? Paul said, if I live at all, for me to live is Christ. Oh, did you understand what I'm saying? So we're not trying to actualize self. We are trying to promote Christ. We are not trying to actually achieve the best of our potentials. We are trying to make Jesus known. We are trying to preach Christ crucified and Christ glorified. Galatians 2, 20. Paul now says, the life I now live in the flesh is not I, but Christ that lives in me. But did you get it? It's not I, but Christ. So I've just, told, I've just shown you three lords. Did you see? Three lords. The first lord is Jesus. The second lord is the devil. The third lord is who? Oh, let me tell you this. I've seen people. I've seen people in church. I've seen people who I am the one who got them saved. I began to interact with them. I began to see that, bro, this guy is a beast. Then somebody says, I know what I want. What I want is money. Anybody who speaks like that, watch him. As he's going, he's stabbing. He's destroying is creating a path for who? Self. And anything that stands in his way, are you getting what I'm saying? Anything that stands in his way as he's going like this, self. Who is Lord? So you ask you now, who is your Lord? You know, it's easy for those of us who are in church to say, if I ask you who is your Lord, Jesus Christ, obviously. But who gets the glory for this thing that you're about to do? Who gains for this thing that you're about to do? You know when Paul said, if I die, I gain. If I leave, Christ gains. You're breathing. Who gains? Why is it that if there's no financial gain, no physical pleasure gain for you, no social gain as a matter of reputation. How people will perceive you big. If those three things are not inside the matter, you are not involved. You know, so people come together to make a deal. And the next thing you hear somebody say is, what's a need for me? Have you heard that thing before? You have taught it too. Well, you are supposed to be part of people. You say, what's a need for me? So listen to me, all this self Self-actualization. Paul says, death worketh in us. Every day we are dying. So that you will be living. Ask yourself one more time. Call your name. Say, Tobore, who is Lord? Tobore, who is Lord? So, three streams I showed you. Well, actually two. One divided into two. The blessing system, which we saw in Proverbs 10, 22. Remember that? Let's quote it so that everybody will know it. Proverbs 10, 22 said, The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. I prefer that one. The other one is, Bow to me, and I will give you the systems, the glory of the Gentiles. The third one is you. You know, we are making ourselves God in this world. In case you don't know, we are making ourselves God in this world. We are calling the shots now. We are the one determining, determining what sex is, male or 
thing. We are the ones determining what is abortion. When it's a life, you see, is the fetus a life? Is the embryo a life? All of all those conversations is what? We making ourselves God. You know what life is, Carol? I'll give you life definition from the Bible. The Bible says the man who took his brother's wife after his brother died, who inherited his brother's wife, and slept with her, and did not ejaculate inside her, he took a life. <laughs> We're not even talking about the fact that the, the semen have begun to do something with the ovary. The eggs. Are you getting the idea? He said, no, that man took a life. So before he said, no, at, at, at a fertile stage, it's not a life. At embryo stage, shut up your mouth. Nobody gave you that right. Who died and made you God? So you see, all those conversations that you see on CNN, and all those debates, they are all proof of self actualization. Man is not determining how things are supposed to be in a world that he did not make. Are you getting what I'm saying? In a world that he did not make, he's making the rules. And then he's changing the rules on the go. He's adjusting the rules on the go to the set of people who will make money from the rules on the go. Can you shout with me this morning? Say, Jesus is Lord. I can't hear you. Some people can do it, but I want to say, you know this statement you are making? You are declaring to your soul and you are announcing to the system round about us. Jesus is Lord! Jesus is Lord. See, the, what I'm doing is like I'm telling the whole world, shut up. There's a Lord already. There's no election for a Lord. Stop. See, drop your posters contesting for Lord. We already have Lord in this world. Jesus is, Lord. Jesus is Lord. Now you give birth to a child. They will come and arrest you if you tell the child that you're a boy or a girl. He's a boy. He's a boy. For the first time, Piers Morgan interviewed two prime ministers of the UK that could not define what a woman is. He asked that lady, what is woman? The woman will say, she's not a biologist, so she will not be able to. What is woman? And then, this religious guy that is there now. They asked him, what is woman? He said, born a female is woman. The Pesmona got on my said, praise the Lord! A British prime minister can tell me what a woman is. You, that's Piers Morgan. I don't think he's saved. But he was frustrated with the fact that he's asking what leaders, what is woman? They're saying, you know, I'm not a biologist, I'll never be. Woman, male and female made he them. No variation. No variation. Nowadays, you're not sure. Someone tweeted that he asked his colleague, one of all these uh, jackpot people, these Japanese guys. <laughs> he asked his colleague at work. He said, man. And he knew he was married. So he asked him, how's your, how's your wife? And HRO sent him a query. Because the man actually has a husband. <laughs> so when you go to resume work in the morning, you ask your colleague that you know is married. He's a man. How is your wife? They are querying you. For discrimination. Somebody was teaching me that they don't call it breastfeeding again. Huh? Chest feeding. Make another say God go punish you now. <laughs> hey, it's not breastfeeding anymore. Because the male can actually put something here and chest feed. What about the warmth? The way God designed it. The way God designed it. Can we shout, Jesus is Lord? Jesus. You know, I, I can stay here all day because some people are acting crazy. Some people are actually acting crazy. So the church needs to remind the world, remind the church first, and then the whole world who is Lord? Jesus is Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
He calls the shot. The Lord calls the shot. Did you hear what I said? The Lord determines who is male and who is female. I, I, it's, not hate, it's not hate speech. Homosexuality is a sin. It's not hate speech. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are gay. You are listening to me. God loves you. I love you. But we, that is God and I, and the church, we hate homosexuality. God hates any form. Are you getting what I'm saying? is the way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we just finished a series. Jesus the way. That is the Lord. So, let's go on. <laughs> In the blessing system, one thing you must now tell yourself is, God is my only source. So, when we begin to talk about the two streams, some of you have been in this intelligent conversation. Let me tell you the truth. Look up. Look up, guys. Can I announce something to you? Your adversary, possessive pronoun, your, the devil, very intelligent, very experienced. Have you ever argued with an experienced Jehovah's Witness before? No, I'm not saying Jehovah's Witness. Experienced. As they ask you questions, all the questions are trap. As the answer is, I got you. I got you. Listen to me. Think of that times two million. Think of that person times two million. That's the devil. That's why don't try to reason with him. You, are you hearing what I'm saying? Have you seen all those American um, intelligence war films? Where they say American government does not negotiate with terrorists. See, the devil cannot be reasoned with. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The devil cannot be what? See, there is no logic that he understands other than destroy, destroy. The thief cometh not but to what? To kill, to steal, and to what? Destroy. Okay, any conversation you and I are going to have, I will still end up what? Destroy. So let me show you something, where the devil begins to hijack people. It's an intelligence. That space. That's why when I see believers, I say they are sapiosexual. The way the devil go take us here. See. What is warfare? Warfare is a battle of war, thoughts. I hope you know that. Casting down imagination. Capturing what? Every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So do you know what they say, what the devil is doing? Sadly, to disappoint some of you, not be the devil depress you for night. They say, I cannot get reminded. The devil, no, 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 devil, not the devil to try that rubbish. Do you hear what I'm saying? Wait, listen, listen, let me tell you the truth. Pressing you in the night is below the devil. The devil has a lot of better things to do <laughs> than to come and carry pillow. Devil, devil. Oh, what does the devil do? I'll tell you. The devil is a manufacturer of thoughts, fads, ideas, ideologies, trends. That's what he does. He spends every day inventing new thoughts. So when you hear principalities, rulers of, weak, of wickedness, rulers of darkness, what do you think they are? They are all distribution channels to distribute the devil's thoughts. So it's not in that business. No, 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 no. He wants to control what God wants to control, your mind. Did you hear what I'm saying? He wants to control your logic. He wants to control how you think. And God has the word of God to do that. The devil has what? Imaginations. Thoughts. Stronghold. That's what he manufactures. He fills your heart with thought that you go to sleep and you have a particular dream. Born out of the multitude of thoughts that he has filled you with. Praise God. That's why people tell me the way they know that this person is their husband is that they dream. You know dream. Bible says out of the multitude of activity, a dream is born. So the devil can give you a dream. By how? Just giving you a multitude of what? Activities. Only you go dream the dream. You go shock. So he sets the stage for you to dream the dream. 
Does anybody understand what I'm saying? He set the stage. So please, the devil is intelligent. Listen to me. Raise your head. I want you to catch it up. We can get into the word of God because I'm, I'm trying to get it. Amen. Why are you laughing? I don't know why they're laughing. I say I'm trying to, to get into my message. So there are two systems. So here's the conversation. If my intelligent friends like them, probably they will have these conversations. How many people argue before? Babel system. How come all the people in Forbes list, they are not born again? I bet how many tithes they don't go to the pay? They say, may they pay tithe, may they pay tithe. Check the richest men in the world, how many be Christian? Check the richest men in Africa, how many be Christian? The richest men in Nigeria, you don't see Christian for there. And then you go home and you think of it. Come to think of it, it is true. Where is the richest African man in Muslim? Ah. Ah. All this church will go now, waste of time. So we go see, go show them, see, get money past us. So now money you can't get. I say, it's about who is Lord. So I say, don't follow the devil into intelligence. Oh. In intelligence, will begin to present things to you. He said, listen, the richest people in Nigeria don't pray in tongues. Not be by tongues. Or not be by tongues. Crow, crow, like the people, you know, they pray any prayer. They get money. They tell me, my pray in tongues. It's a devil. It is very impossible for you to measure wealth in the kingdom with the same yastic with wealth in the world. The kingdom of God measures wealth by your dispersing ability. The kingdom of the world measures wealth by your hoarding ability. The kingdom of God measures wealth by your scattering ability. The kingdom of the world measures wealth by your gathering ability. Are you seeing that now? How much you can keep versus how much you can give. First Timothy 6, 17, he said, Command them that are rich in this world. Say, now we be that. Say, he said, now we be that. He said, command them that are rich in this world not to be haughty, that is high-minded, that they do not trust in uncertain riches, but that they should trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Now look at the command. He says, let them do good and let them be rich in good works. He says, let them be ready, ready to give, willing to share. Are you seeing it? So how do you measure those who are rich in the kingdom? By their readiness to give. How do you measure those who are rich in the kingdom? By their willingness to share. Proverbs 11, 24 says to us, there is he that gathered, there is he that scattered, yet increaseth. He said, and there is he that withholdeth more than is necessary. He said, he's tending towards poverty. Jesus, in Luke 12, verse 15, said that a man's life does not constitute of the abundance of things which he owns. So he says, what's the measure of a man's life? Do not measure a man by the summation of the properties that he has. So he goes into a compound, you see the six cars that somebody parked there. And you know that he ain't six figures. And he sees feet. With six pack. And then you know, this man could be a big man. Person will build six bedroom mansion with six cars, not big man. <laughs> how do you measure big? So write it in your notes. You must answer these things. Tobori, how do I measure big? What do you think they measure in the four list? If you look at Luke 12, verse 15. And the Bible says a man's life does not constitute of the multitude of things that he owns. What do they measure in full list? The summation of the asset that a person has. Is that not just what Jesus said they should not measure? I want to. Is that not what Jesus said they should not measure? But when they want to do Forbes 100, Forbes 100 Africa, what are they measuring? The assets. The multitude of things that he owns. And Jesus said, a man's life does not consist of the multitude of things that he owns. So these two systems, they're not the same. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Because one of the things I'm asking you today is, where do you get your money ideas from? Where did you get your riches or wealth ideas from? Where did you get your prosperity ideas from? It affects everything. It affects how you live. It affects absolutely everything. Psalm 112. Please, you'll get up with me. We're going to do something. Psalm 112, the Bible, the Bible describes Psalm 112 as the portrait of a blessed man. Yes, that's what it's called. Please, everyone, be on your feet. Be on your feet. Psalm 112, the portrait. You know what the portrait is? It says you get a maestro, a great painter, to come and paint what a blessed man looks like. It says Psalm 112, that's what the Bible calls it, the portrait of a blessed man. So if you want to know how a blessed man is supposed to be, let's read Psalm 112. Are you all ready? Wouldn't you like to know how a blessed man is supposed to be? I just told you now, Psalm 112 is the portrait, the picture of a blessed man. So read it out, read it out, read it out. One, two, three, go. Everybody go. His descendant. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, because I want you to read well. Are you seeing that they are describing a blessed man? Say, this is a blessed man. Number one, his seed shall be mighty on the earth. Oh, are you all getting the idea? So, say, please read out because you are also describing yourself. How many of you are blessed? How many of you are blessed? So, let me show you something. Why you must read this intentionally is that you are now seeing a picture, make a picture of it, make a mental video of it, how your life will be ending, how your life will be. Do you understand it? So when you say the portrait of a blessed man, it's a, when you say I'm a blessed man, what does it mean? What does it mean, Sly? I'm a blessed man. Starting with number one, you can you see some of you need to even go home and write. Portrait of a blessed man. As many as you can write out. It means that my seed will be mighty on the earth. I have no small child. I have no inferior. Are you guessing what I'm saying? I have no child of less significance. My seed shall be mighty on the earth. Are you guys seeing this now? Oh, let's go on from verse 2. 1, 2, 3, go. Verse 2, please. Verse 2. It says, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Go on. He is gracious and full of compassion. Ah. And lend it. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Go on. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Go on. Verse 9. Look at it. That's where we're going. One, two, three, go. So, look, I told you the blessing system versus the barbell system. In the barbell system, it's about how much you can keep. In the blessing system, say the blessed man, he has what? This past. Did you see that? He has what? This past. Please sit down. Please sit down. See, he has this past, not that he has gathered. So, the blessing system and the barbell system, they defy a lot. God judge you as prosperous. According to the seed that you have in the ground. According to what you have dispersed. You know, people judge by that copeland in this world. They say that he has a very expensive aircraft. How will a man of God have that kind of aircraft? They judge him by the one that he has. They don't judge him by the 27 that he has given out. Did you hear what I just said? Nobody say, ah, don't you know Brother Copeland, he has given out 27 airplanes. No, they say, don't you know Brother Copeland, he has one expensive airplane. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. 
So the principles of God's kingdom, where wealth is consigned, differs from the principle of the kingdom of darkness. Which is why you must begin to renew your mind. And that's what this teaching series is about when it comes to how God wants you to be prosperous. So go back to that Proverbs 10, 22 again. The blessing of the Lord. He makes it rich and added no sorrow to it. No sorrow. No sorrow. You know, let me show you this. If it was not something Satan could do in Matthew 4, he would not have tempted Jesus with it. He says, only bow to me. When you bow, you make him your Lord. So I said it's about who is Lord. Do you know in the life of Abraham? <laughs> Hallelujah. Abraham grew to the point where he made God his only source. He wasn't always like that. No, he was not always like that. Let me just show you something. Go to Genesis 13 from verse 1. I'm reading the New King James. Genesis 13. It says, Then Abraham went from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him. To the south, Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold. Now, having been taught confession, some of you will take this scripture and you begin to confess it. Where did Abraham get this livestock? The previous chapter from verse 14, Abraham went to Egypt and they saw his fine wife. Abraham cast out from that woman. Bible says Pharaoh saw her. The princes of Egypt. Please read it from verse 14. Put it up. The princes, Genesis 12, 14. The princes of Egypt, they saw that the woman was beautiful. They were the ones who went to tell their king, we have seen a beautiful woman. That woman must be beautiful. Are you getting what I'm saying? And now, she was so beautiful that the princes did not even desire her for themselves. That the only man among us that should have this kind of wife, let it be our king. <laughs> Do you understand? Let's see it now, verse 14. Verse 14. It says, and it was when Abraham came into Egypt that the Egypt... The Egyptians saw the woman and that she was very beautiful. 15. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. Do you know when they are everybody saying, our king? And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. 16. He treated Abraham well for her sake. When you read it like this now in the New, in the New King James, it looks like Abraham had all these things. But go to the Nas or the Amplified. Just give us Nas, you'll see it. No, now. The verse where we were in the Nas. Therefore, he treated Abraham well for her sake and gave him. Did you see it? Sheep, oxen, donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys and camels. Pharaoh paid bright price for Abraham's sister. And then the Lord visited Pharaoh in the night. And Pharaoh said, why didn't you tell me she was your sister? And listen, Pharaoh said they should send that man away with everything. Abraham not get dignity to say, take back. Next chapter, he said, Abraham was very rich in livestock. Two times, Abraham collected bright price for his wife. He got to where Abimelech was. And the Bible says Abimelech gave him gold, silver, livestock, bride price for his wife. His own wife. Oh. After he said, go, 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 go. Abraham took all. So we saw. Abraham was getting rich. Bad best and done. That's what I'm telling you. Lying. It was until the battle of Sodom. The Bible says, and then he stood before the king of Sodom. And the king of Sodom said, take all. Abraham said, that used to be me. He said, but now, <laughs> go to Genesis 14 from verse 21. He said, I have lifted my hands to the most high God. So that no man will be able to say, they have made Abraham See, I will not take from money again. So you see, the barber system, you will get rich by lying. In the blessing system, you will say the truth. 
and the Lord will bless you. Are, are you all hearing what I'm telling you? You will say the truth and the Lord will what? Bless you. Does anybody understand these things? Abraham, something has changed in him. And I pray that thing changed in you today in the name of Jesus. He said, I have lifted my hands to the heavens. That is, I have turned my eyes to make God my only source. When you function the blessing system, no man will be able to say they made you rich. No man will be able to say they made you. God will use people to communicate to. God will use people to distribute to you. But listen to me. Something about the blessing system is very special. God said, I will bless you. I will cause men to bless you. Say, then relax. I will bless them that bless you. So when God uses people to distribute to you, they will count it as a privilege of being used. The Bible system is both religious and commercial. Please learn. Learn. Learn this. Oh, please. Please. In Revelation 13, 17, no, there's this concept of the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. People wrongly interpret. Do you know, at the heart of the mark of the beast, the battle is principle of trade? Revelation 13, 17 tells us, it says no man will be able to buy and sell except one who has taken that mark, except one who has made the beast his lord. And no, please, listen to me. It is not about a mark on your forehead. That's why we get deceived. The mark of the beast is already here in this world. Elder John said that that's what we call Antichrist, who is already in the world. Did you hear me? The Antichrist, who is where? Already in the world. No, don't look for him. The mark of the beast really is about principles of trade. That if you don't cut corners, you can't make it. So when you cut corners, you're taking the mark. I told you today we're going to look at it. Who is the Lord? He said, no man now will be able to buy and what? And sell. So what are they after? My trade. What are they after? My commerce. What are they after? My career. What are they after? The principle that I work with. That's what they're after. So you must now be very careful that you trade only in the confinement of the word of God. The word of God has fences. They steal a property in the office. You see your colleagues steal that machine. They say they've not been using that big gen. 200 kVA gen for a long time. Brand new. Your colleagues, they move on it. They steal it. They share money and then you took it. And you say, but not be you. But you know where the money is from. How about Daniel who said, I will not partake of the king's meat. How about Daniel who said it? People are stealing office tools to sell. They buy you lunch. I will not partake of the king's meat. Their offenses. Oh, did you hear what I say, church? Are you hearing me this morning? In the blessing system, you must make financial progress within the confinement of the fence that God's word has created. Contract in the office. You take it, you just pad it up. Everybody does it. Are you everybody? But as for thou, continue in the things that you have learned. Second Timothy 3 and 15. As for thou, continue in the things which thou has learned, knowing of whom you learned them. Continue in the things which thou have learned, the things which you are convinced of. 14, please. Go back to 14. We must get it. Yes, it's 14. Continue the things which thou have learned, the things which you are convinced of, knowing of whom you learn them. Yes? Everybody pass in pass in voice in the office. Are you everybody? Can you tell your neighbor for me this morning? Others may, but you can't. No, no, no. See the way I'm doing it. Point them in the eye. Others may, but you can't. Others may, but you can't. Praise God. But let me tell you this. By way of mentioning, let me remind you. The blessing system requires that you have the work of your own hand. 
Because in Deuteronomy 28 and 12, he said, I will bless the work of your hands. The blessing will be poured on the work of your hand. So if there is no work that you are doing, the blessing system cannot work in your life. Get a job. Start from somewhere. Start from somewhere. Start from somewhere. Do something. Do something. The only caveat that I'm teaching this morning is that because some of you are not doing anything, so we have to just digress to say do something. But what I'm really teaching is that do work, but don't put your trust in your work. You remember that First Timothy 6, 17? Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, and that they do not put their trust in riches, but they will put their trust in the living God. So I'm also saying work, but don't put your trust in your work. But for those who are not working, let him that will not work, let him not, let him not what? Eat. You have two hands and two legs. You are already talking about the kind of job. You want oil job, but the rice you are eating is not oil rice. Are you there? Are you there? So also save. But know what to save. Don't save the Lord's own. That which is the Lord should not be found in your saving and your investment. I am telling you the truth. I'm telling you the principles of the kingdom. The Lord himself said, he will fill your bands. You know what bands is in the Old Testament? Your savings. Oh, you, you, you need to understand this thing. But that was a consequential promise to giving the Lord that which is the Lord's. Proverbs 3 and verse 9. He said, Honor the Lord with thy substance. Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thy increase. He said, So shall thy so shall so shall consequence. Are you seeing it? After you honor the Lord with your substance, after you honor the Lord with the first fruits of your increase, he says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty. Oh, did you get it? Your bands there is where you store your extra yams. That's your savings. If you got that, say a big amen. amen. So you must know that finances are deeply spiritual. Money, as far as God is concerned, is spiritual. That's why Jesus spoke more about money. Above all subjects. Elder James said something, and you will bring collection to many of you. James said, if you are an employer of labor, take this currency now. Take this correction, rather. And you are withholding your salary of your workers. James 5 and verse 4. It said, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped your fields. It says, Which is of you kept back by fraud? It said, The hire of the laborers, it said, They cry it. It said, And the cries of them which have reaped your field have entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. If you know scripture at all, you will fear that title. The Lord of the Sabbath means that God is the commander of the host of the armies of heaven. Do you know where the cry of staff he did not pay go to? They didn't go to Father. New Testament Christian. They didn't go to Father. The people that you did not pay, that complained. When they are going home, inside Keke that day, they didn't have transport. They are tracking home. Your staff that you did not pay, when they are tracking home, that frustration. He said, no, he didn't come to listen. He didn't come to Father. He didn't go to God. He went straight into the ear of the Lord of the Sabbath. That's the military title of God. He says, oh God, you that did not pay your workers what you said you would pay them. He said, you are opposing who? Commander of the, law, of the host of what? Of heavens. It's him that you oppose. In the Bible, there's only one thing that cried from the ground. It's blood. So when he says that the hire of those people who tilled your land are crying to God, when they gave you their life, they gave you their blood. When they worked for you, they gave you their blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And now he said that blood is crying. They don't come to church and want to give people a holy kiss. Hey, man, man, how are you? How was your week? And the whole salary. Eh? 
He said, the Lord of the Sabbath will answer you. It's, that's why some of you will not know why there will be a struggle in, in that your contract. In that your disease, there's a struggle. It's a struggle. So you're here, you're listening to me, pay the salary. Be the last to eat in the office. In case you don't know this, one of the reasons I'm teaching this series is so that you will know that you have a divine duty to create opportunities for others to prosper. Last Sunday, I said, let you be measured by how many families you prospered, that you created opportunity to prosper for. Let it be that there are families represented in your office. And because they are here, their children have more than enough. Listen, it's not a joke when Amorabas come to your house to see your money or your life. It's, money is a matter of life and death, in case you don't know. You, know. you think you don't know why the sacrifice for money in the occult is blood? Money is deeply, deeply spiritual. Let me show you something about the Babel system. Are you learning anything today? Are you learning anything today? Let's go to the root of that word, Babel. Genesis 10 and verse 8. Bible says, and Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Do you know the word Nimrod? It means less revolt. His name means less rebel. Nimrod was the man that said, Go to Genesis 11. Let us build a city that will touch the heavens. I want to teach you something about the Babel system this morning. So what is the Babel system? The Babel system is the world's order of trying to use material things to replace our need for God. What Nimrod was trying to build that was cut over of Babel was to prove to God that we don't need him. We will build something from here that we get to wherever he is. Oh, are you all getting this? We don't need God. That's what the Babel system is about. And let me tell you this. Raise your head. You can go back to the same one. I want you to catch this. Everyone look at me. That's what the Western world is also about. If you're in the Western world, eh? They don't need you to pray about anything. And that's why uh, Nigerians, the Japanese people, once they just jack by now, once they see health insurance, NHIS, once they see housing, this housing scheme, just feel like all these things people are praying about in Nigeria. What's the need? Why? In America, you want to go to school, student loan. Before you finish student loan, car loan, house loan, mortgage, whatever they call it. And there's, so at the end of the day, there's no need to pray. And that's why you see people, they manage just go uh, across water. You, see, you, you guys are just stressing over little things. You're stressing over little things. You understand that? Somebody, somebody has appendix. You should go now. The NHIS will take care of it now. They will just they'll take it out. I hear you. Be healed. Be healed. You want to move, you pray. Are you seeing that now? You are sick, you pray. You want to go to school, you pray. You pray for divine supply so that the school fees will come. You look to God. So the Western world, the Babel world, what is it? They want to make sure you, they cut your dependence on God. And how are they doing that? By providing, in quotes. And if you look at the provision, they say they are providing. They are enslaving. So what have they done? They've given you a new Lord. They told you not to pray to your Lord so that they can become your Lord. And then you spend the rest of your life indebted. I say it's about who is. Do you catch it now? It's about who is. For Jesus is our Lord. I will still pray when I want to marry. 
I will still pray when I want to have children. This idea that you don't need to, you know, you, you got this, you got this. You can have the baby, just sign, just sign these few papers. Have a baby and go, just sign these few papers. Six years, you're going to pay for picking, like say you manufacture picking. No, 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 you don't have to have a lot of money. Just come, you can go to school. When you're in school, you're working, you're this, you're that. 20 years, some people have not paid their student loan. I hope you guys know that. So what are they doing? They're giving you, in quote, supply. But what they're really giving is a new load. Listen to me. Any system that tries to take away a master is the new master. That's why forever it will be so. Anybody that says they are NLC presidents, every we not go agree movement that you have seen in this country in itself is a campaign to promote somebody to become the new master. They not go agree against. That's why the next government will come and tell you that Tinubu finished the money. Tinubu did not. Tinubu. The previous government is always the. So, but what are they trying to do? They are trying to give you a new master. Can you say with me this morning? Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Say that. Say, Jesus is Lord. Oh, that's all the fights. That's all the fights. The fight is about who is your Lord. Who is your Lord? <laughs> Look at it. Say with me this morning. Let's make a commitment. Say money or not. I will seek the face of the Lord. For when, for where, and what I will build. So, Generally, the Babel system exists to help man know that he does not need God. And that's what he's doing. And how will he do it? He will provide systems, structures, so that your needs are not something you pray about. But Jesus said, when you pray, say to the Father, give us this day our daily bread. Now, let me tell you the implication of it. I want you to pay a lot of attention. In the barber system, your worth, your sense of worth, now depends on what you own, on how in vogue you are, how chic, how up-to-date you are. That's why we keep changing gadgets. Because we are trying to increase our worth. Which phone do they use? iPhone 10. You not get money again. So please, I want everyone, please just look up, look up, look at me. It's very key. This is the prison the devil creates. Because the barber system, what it does to cut your dependence on God was to give you things. Guess what? It now makes everything about those things. Are you getting the idea now? So the definition now is about those things. Where they stay. Who it be. Where do they drive? When they ask you that question three times, you need to drive something. It goes to some places in the world, systems. About things. You drive your baby boy. Back outside. You know, this is why People are upgrading their Camry to Lexus 2020. Makes the car so ugly, by the way. What are all those crazy upgrades? Somebody buys a 2006 Land Cruiser, upgrade it to 2021 on the outside. So you, you know how bad that is. That's why the motor is very fast. When you enter inside, we just fell back 20 years. Why are you so, now look at it? What if the the, the, the what? Baffles me, Greg, is they use 1.6 million, 2 million to upgrade the outside of the car. Why didn't you just put 2 million to increase the comfort of the inside of the car? Because it was always about what people think. The barber system of things. The barber system of ownership. That's why people paint the outside of the house. The barber system of impression. So he makes it all about things, what you have. 
It's the only reason you are wearing a bone straight. You want to pay for one, for one straight year. If you're weak for a party, you're gone. And they don't understand what's happening because you are still paying for the hair. How do you think people borrow a lot of money to marry? Babel! Tell all those guys that I'm currently doing premarital class for. Say, if I hear say you borrow money, they tell you. Somebody tell you, say, listen, they tell you. If I hear say you do party, I'll fight. Two of you go and rent a beautiful house. Two of you are running small business. You need money. What the money you want to garner for your wedding? Put it into each other's business. Come on Tuesday evening here yeah, with your family. I'll wed you. I'll pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> what are you telling me, rubbish? You can't do party finish. You call the concert, they squeeze. Because when they owe money, they, they, they squeeze. Sunday afternoon, like this, after wedding, we just, after church, let's go back there. Who give this woman out? It's here when I live, worried that I see a lot of crazy things. When I was in TPH, so, so we never the best. We're in ways of people they marry. I mean, Pastor, when they marry, so no, on Tuesday evening they came, they came, they are married. People who have money. Oh. Pastor Ronald, I came to minister in our church. Pastor Ronald. My wife was classing me with his, with his daughter. Pastor Ronald has money. When the daughter got wedded, Saturday morning, they didn't share water. Man, Saturday morning, real. Say, God, man, God bless you, everyone. See you soon. God, it's God bless you. See you soon. My own pastor got married. I don't even know the location till today. Small wedding. His children, um, his, first, his second daughter, Kenny. It was a field, green field. Few people. Pastor Tony, the boy's parents, and some people. My wife, is he poor? In case you don't know, more poor people love money than rich people. It's poor people that have things to prove. So others of you that are about to get married, oh God, the last. You hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I want to teach you guys something. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Are you learning these things? So we keep changing gadgets. Why? We have not become slaves to fads. We have become servants to trend. But this one, they reign now. See, when the bank account is full, you are floating. When the bank account is empty, you hide, you sink. Now people get money, they go outside. <laughs> Worry. Now who get money, they go outside, though. Outside is expensive. This free outside, where God made. This earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. It's an insult to the blood of Jesus. Because you begin to measure your worth by your bank account. It's what Babel does. It's based on greed that produces covetousness that always yields materialism. Three words you must write. Greed in you will produce what? What is covetousness? Illegal means to get. See, you will plot to plot to. Covetousness is the plotting. The, the effort that goes into the scheming. So that you will get. That's what the covetousness is. So when he said that should not covet thy neighbor's property, he said, do not plot. Do you understand? It's plotting. Barber system produces greed in a man. And once greed is in a man, the man will plot. The man has made up his mind, I go buy this motto. This 2020, not go, this 2024, I must buy this motto. When he tells them, I must buy that motto, he pledged to covet. Then the plotting will begin. I was the apest of greed, materialism. Gather more and more materials. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. So in the Bible system, we place things above God. We place things above people. Where we have placed things above God, who be people? I tell somebody, the person who to listen to God, now you go listen to. You did very say they not take your advice. <laughs> At the end of the Babel system, man makes himself God. Man begins to make the laws. Are you saying that? We begin to call the shots. So everybody, let me tell you the truth. That's why I say I pay attention. You will be tested. 
the money test must come. It happens in ministry. Oh, yes, it happens in ministry. People offer pastors 20% so that they'll use the church account, account as drop. You know what drop is? If you don't know what drop is, keep your heart clean. <laughs> Remain clean. I know pastors who've done it. The drop. How Christian is your business? How Christ, I used to publish a magazine long ago. In a particular organization that is a cult group, they just wanted one page. One page. And the message they wanted to send is very peaceful. I still remember the message. All that will be on the page is worry for peace. And the money they will give will pay for the production and distribution and everything. But I said no. And we were broke. Faith is also the ability to say no. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, Moses said no. Are you hearing what I'm saying? By faith, Moses said what? No! Somebody comes to meet you and say, Isaac, you know you, you're a chem engineer. Let's use your certificate. Let's have an engineering firm. You'll be the face. You'll be the face. You'll be the one running this. We will just be getting some government contract that we will not execute. But you'll just be taking so and so percent. They say, oh, you already have a racial business. If you come now, let's, let's do some deals now. Inside share, there's this thing. There's this thing like this. You'll do it like this, but let's do some deals. So who's your company? You get you, you up. Somebody inside the share will come and meet you. That this is the way they do it inside the share. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we will use your company to apply. It's our gig. Abby, and you take the percent, you take that percent. That's the devil. Bow to me. I will give you the kingdoms, the glory of the kingdoms of this world. Do you get it? So if you hear that scripture, you think that one day you'll be sleeping, the devil will just come. A maker, a maker. Because it's too much Isha Wuru that have disturbed your mind. You know Isha Wuru? It has corrupted you. No, this is, how the, this is how the devil comes. Did you hear what I said? This is how the devil comes. Listen to me. There are people actually in this world that know loopholes in industries. And they tell you, let us apply. This is the, these are the documents you need to apply. If you didn't get supply, when you get the supply, like this, like this, you'll send this amount to this side. You'll send this amount to this side. You'll give this one this side. Everybody is what? Scratch my back, I scratch. Is the language of Babel. That's why some of you cannot even recommend people in peace again. Do you know anybody that supplies uh, tile? You, you supply all things. Importer, exporter, pure water, all things. You can't even just send the number again. Take, this is the girl that does the thing. No. No, I may I call her. I don't call her. She sent her 200,000, but she actually told you 140. Babel. I know the word of God is hitting some of you. If you would hear the word of God, had it not your heart. Listen to me. People will offer you shortcuts to wealth. With just a small, small compromise of your faith. <laughs> you say, can you buy my marriage? <laughs> I've seen some crazy things on social media. <laughs> Praise God. So they will offer you what? Shortcut to wealth. With a small, very small, nobody will notice it. Was anybody there when the devil was telling Jesus to bow down? Do you know, Jesus was about that, nobody going to know. And the boss had to begin to miracle. <laughs> Wealth with a little, just a shekene compromise. If you don't understand shekene, forget about it. <laughs> of your faith. Oh, are you here? And let me tell you this. 
The devil is never an original. Everything the devil is offering is a counterfeit. And this will help you. This will strengthen your resolve to be able to say no. Everything the devil is offering is always a what? A counterfeit. So where the devil was offering Jesus the glories of the world, what he was offering is a counterfeit. What it means is what God already created is bigger, better, and has no soul. Do you get it now? So the, listen, the devil, see, I wrote it in my notes with caps, all caps. The devil is never an original. Everything the devil offers is a counterfeit of a better thing that God has made. So if the devil offers you wealth, there is more money. You know one of the things that, has, that, that stretches my resolve? Isaac, every time you are close to a breakthrough, the devil always offers you something. You accept it, you forfeit the bigger, better, peaceful provision that God has. See, two inches. Amen. So listen to me. Anytime the devil is giving you an opportunity for quick money, know that you are close to bigger money from God. Did you hear what I said? Because he doesn't want you to get that bigger and better one. He wants you to trade, substitute what God is bringing. So how do you do it? I tell the story, sir. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I tell the story of how Florence Chadwick was the first person to swim across the English and French canal. The water body that separates England from France. And the first time she did it, she couldn't make it. Because she got to a part of the water that was very cold. And then she realized she could not even do her best stroke because the water was very cold. She was freezing. And then she had to raise her hand, like surrender. So they pulled her out of the water. When she came out, she was a few breaststrokes away from France. So she took a break. Months later, she came back to do the same thing. But this time, she started out from France just to touch the water there. And then she realized that the water in France is colder than the water in England. So she went back to England to swim. So when she got to the place where her bones seemed to be freezing, where it looked like it was cold, she began to shout, I'm in France. I'm in France. I'm in France. I know I'm dead. Do you understand it? She was just shouting, I'm in France. So the way she motivated herself was to tell herself she was there. One more best stroke, I'm in France. So let me tell you this. Every time the devil is offering you that shortcut, He's trying to prolong the journey. Every time the devil just comes to say, all you need to do is add one zero. Understand that God has like 12 zeros. A few moments away from this one. Are you all getting what I'm saying? You take the bribe, you forbid the blessing. You take the bribe momentarily, you seem to have what you need but you forfeit the grand plan of God. Say, I will live by the blessing. Oh, I can hear you say, I will live by the blessing. So it, when the devil is telling you, I will give you the glories of the kingdom of this world, imagine that God will give you the glory of the kingdom of heaven. So in the Bible system, they're trying to replace God in the hearts of men. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Again, I say, remember, in the blessing system, you must have what you are doing, right? Though that's not the emphasy. But please, pressing computer with thought is around your neck is not work. Speaking phonetics. You know, when, you're speaking, when you are speaking phonetics to old women on the phone, that is not work. Ephesians 4.28. Let him that stole steal no more. Rather, let him walk with his hand, that which is Good. God is the SI unit for good. God is the SI unit for good. God is the measurement for good. So talking to somebody on the phone, you in a minute, you got it, that's not work. That's theft. And the cause of the Lord is in the hands, in the house of the thief. But it's not even that work I want to talk about. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord will not fall or come on your illegitimate labor. 
Listen, some of you need to start from somewhere and stop all those urgent 2K calls. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. Start from that place where you are. If you don't start small, you will not see the blessing of the Lord. In Isaiah 51, verse 2, it says, Look to your father Abraham and your mother Sarah who bore you. I called him alone. Alone there was small. That's why Job will tell us. Job 87 says, Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end shall greatly increase. Praise God. So to begin to function in the blessing system, principle number one. Principle number one. Simple English, oh, and you think you have it, but I pray you get it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, God is my only source. God is my only source. I want you to write it. I want you to shout it. God is my only source. God is my only source. What does this mean? This means that you will have to come to a place where your sense of achievement and your sense of value is derived in nothing else and no one else but Christ. You see this sentence I made? So simple in English, and it is everything. If you get this, you will not be moved. I says, for you to say God is your only source, which also by implication, GT says, God is your source of worth. What it means is that you have come to a place where your sense of attainment your sense of worth, your self-esteem comes from no one and nothing else but Christ. What is this that if you get it, you will know that you have made it? Right now. What is it that if you get it, you will know that you have made it? That thing, please, can you look at me, everyone? Look at me. For you to cast the grace that God is dispensing in this service, you have to be truthful to these questions I'm asking you. Whatever it is that you know in your heart, if you get it, you will know, you have, you know that, that feeling of attainment. That is a threat to the blood of Jesus. Young lady, if you believe that when you marry a hen, now you complete person. You have turned husband and marriage to Jesus Christ. Your worth Say, Christ is my worth. Christ is my worth. Oh, I can't hear you. Say, Christ is, my worth. Christ is my worth. I just remember a very crazy song that they used to sing when I was a child on radio. By one company called Pretty GCE. Uh, let's test how many of you were young and old in worry. If you know Sabi, read and write, you blind, oh. If, on that big meeting, you know complete. Now, if you Sabi, read and write, speak, build English. Now he make you complete person. See adverts. But that's an insult. The illiterate man that they save is complete. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you hear what I said? Whether I shall be read and write or not, as long as I'm saved, I'm what? But remember what we're saying. If you believe that once you don't buy your, your GLK this year now, once you buy your DLK, they go, yeah, what? You know, some people don't go to their hometown. December time, it's time to go home. They don't go to their hometown because they never... You get the way I want to enter. Somebody has told me, that. I say, Pastor, you get the way I want to enter. I don't want to get to go village for night. You call greet your papa, greet your mama, everybody. You go, you early morning. Don't pita. But once you don't... Enter like this. So what is that thing that you feel that once you get it, a sense of attainment? Woman will never born complete. Tell me, woman will never born complete. You are whole in Christ. You started whole. You can't go back to being on whole. Did you hear what I said? Say with me, say I'm complete in Christ. I can't hear the church. Say I'm complete in Christ. For Christ is my worth. So when we say God is my only source, it's a consciousness where you have decided that you will never accept 
any increase except it comes to you God's way. Oh, write it, oh, write it. God is my only source. I say it's a decision I make where I've decided that I will not take any money that comes through a corrupt and illegal means. I made up my mind to go God's way. I made up my mind to be rich God's way. Hey, no mean. I wait everybody to just put two zero for the invoice. Hey. I've been there, listen to me. Running a creative agency and working graphics in Lagos. Remember the first time we got one oil servicing company to do their job. The people, we even had a friend in the office. And when we were done, our own invoice even, because it was an oil servicing company now, so we, we put in the invoice. You know what I mean? They saw it. And then the man said that the lady in account, 200. The office secretary, 200. By the time they finish, fear cannot let me write it. I, I, I hear what I'm saying. When they finish the number of the people that money is going to, fear, not let us write. So they will pay all the monies into your account, then you will distribute. I'm telling you, real. So when you say God is my source, is that only you make a decision. I will not accept any financial increase that is not coming the Bible way. Because earlier I asked people who is Lord, and they say Jesus is your Lord. Now the Word of God is pinching you. It's pinching you left, right, and center. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Your company sent you somewhere. You got there and you began to pitch your own. And Jesus said, if you are not faithful in that which belongs to one another, who will give you your own? And you are wondering why you will definitely hire dubious staff whatsoever you sow. You hear what I'm saying? He says he dilutes himself who attempts to dilute. Let me tell you the truth. The way you are now in the office where you're working, that's not your home. That's all your staff will be. No, but it's not a cost. It's not a joke. It's a law of life. He says he deludes himself. Who attempts to delude God? For whatsoever a man soweth, that and only that shall he reap. So dishonor, you will reap dishonor, eh? Press down. Good measure. Shaking together. <laughs> Yay! You are only under pressure to buy a phone that you have to pay for 14 months for. Because your sense of what and achievement is in things. Do you understand it? Samson will go for for keke. If you know Samson, if you fall once, it'll finish. If they open up the screen, name the Samsung. Samsung gives us, you know what I mean? The screen is almost 70% of the full phone. It break you. And then imagine you never pay finish. You see, you know in America, they don't pay for phone completely. They don't. So I have this Apple thing where they are constantly trying to, America, they are constantly trying to swap my iPhone. They send me stuff, I look at it, they say, you can, beginning iPhone 15 Pro Max, say beginning at $30. All I need to do. So the average American guys, listen to me in case you don't know, because you people are watching film and you think that they have more than you. No, 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 no. They are all slaves. He gets an iPhone 14 last year. As he was, they take 50, 30 dollars away from his increase every month for that phone. Before that one is over, Apple releases 15. And they tell him to bring it. And they trade it. All this your UK use where they sell for plaza, wait for the come. Who be UK? Who be UK use? 
So they, bring, they take the phone back. They give him a new one. They estimate the cost of the old one. And he keeps paying Apple. Let me tell you, Apple makes his money from subscriptions. Just be paying me small, small. Be paying for the space. Be paying for the memory. Be paying for... Just Apple doesn't want you to buy and go. Apple wants you to just keep giving me. $50 every month for 1 million people. That's what we want. Please, you can't buy this one and go. No, 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 no. You just have to be. But when your sense of worth, your sense of achievement, when it is on things, you become a slave to things. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you here? Are you here? Let me show you something. In the blessing system, God is your portion, not things. In Deuteronomy 18.2, he said, God is the inheritance of the Levites. God is the inheritance of the Levites. The NLT said, the Lord himself is the special possession of the Levites. God is my inheritance, not things. Let me tell you what it means. So much so that when things now come into my life, there is no room for pride in me. Good things will come to your life. Amen. Amen. But if you understand and you can take this word today, when the good things come, they are not your life. Oh, church, are you ready to take God's word the way God's word is? Anything you have that you cannot give away is controlling you one way or the other. All things can go. Hey, I say all things can go. Can you, get, can you tell somebody to come into your wardrobe? Take anything you want. Except. That's the God. That's the God. That's the one that needs to go. That except. That is the one that needs to. Oh, yes. Some people, they eye me like this. Can you open your wig closet and say, take anything you want. Except. That one needs to go. I'm not exaggerating. God, listen, listen. When you come to the place of God is my only source, then it will be easy for you to give out the car. You hear what I'm saying? Why is it that the day the car is bad, he didn't come to church? Because you get away to the drive enter church. Get away to the drive come out. So the, the day you're not going to drive enter, you don't need to come. It's the way this system is rigged. When we were still at 90 Emperor Road, I took my car to the car wash. The one close to Western Junction. So I was walking back to church, just walking, making some calls, thinking, praying, just going back to church. Different people stopped cars and care for me that day. Pastor. Where to do your car? Castle, where am I going? Pastor, you need a ride. Pastor. So I'm not going to come from here to estate. I can't. And I went down, Babe. <laughs> Nothing that they wash the motor. I'm strolling to church. See church for there. See the church for there. That's how some of you are. My boat, I book boat. Boat is coming, boat. It's a definition of worth. The car break down. Guys, I can come to church. See, they got to say my money don't finish for that church. Who told you they are thinking of you? That's the way they seek help. The person they seek help. He come here desperately like a woman with the issue of blood. We won't touch M of garment. But he thought say they go judge you. Say, ah, bless you. Why did they come down for Keke now? So I'm not getting money again. He, he don't fall. He has bad don't fall. You know, that's how they say it in worry. Say, don't fall. He will not fall in Jesus' name. Yeah. But, but are you all getting what I'm saying? So in the Bible system, this is how they just begin to attach you to things. Attach you to things that you cannot let go. Soon enough, the things become your definition. The things become your worth. The things become your accomplishment. Paul said, I desire to know nothing of you except what? 
Christ. I don't care what's in your fridge. I don't care whether I eat basmati. I don't care whether I eat stone rice. You get Christ. Say, Christ is my worth. Say it again. Say, Christ is my worth. So when good things come, I'm not proud. When good things come, they cannot add to who I am in Christ. You know what I'm just telling you? Rose Royce has nothing on my salvation. If I get a Rose Royce today, I will not be more saved. Oh, does anybody catch this? I, I really want us to understand. Do you get it? Rose Royce is not the proof of my salvation. Mistaking the gain is godliness. It is a mistake to think that gain is godliness. Oh, are you all hearing this? Oh, I pray you'll be blessed with so much material things. Amen. But do you know what I'm saying to you, Educa? Do you know Jesus told one guy? The Bible said that man left Jesus with many sorrows. I believe that's Matthew 19. Jesus said, go and sell all that you have. Is it Matthew 19 or Luke 19? Confirm. From 21. And give to the poor. And come and follow me. The Bible says in verse 22, the guy left Jesus depressed. For he had... And when I began to study it, I was amazed. So, no, Jesus didn't want him to sell it all. Jesus is not saying, you should, if you should put all your things, your car on eBay. No, the, it was a lesson. He said, detach yourself from things. Let things be things. Let God be what? Once you get there, I can give anything. I said, some of you, you lose a particular thing. Your life is over. Shop, boy, your life is over. We shop. We start again. Oh, did you hear what I said? We, well, Isaac was not attached to the wells that he dug. So when they took it, he, I will start. I, I like starting again. In my life, about three times I've started again. I've had a house. I had a lot of things in the house. And one day I said, I want to go. I need my bag of clothes and books. Let me go somewhere and I start afresh. Because... So you know what I'm also saying to you, sir? Don't let anybody describe you with what you have. You know that boy with the drive that red Mercedes Benz? God forbid. Call me my name and call me who Christ saved. Did you hear what I said? Soon enough, what if that Mercedes Benz go? I lost my identity. So who are you now? You know that boy with the drive that red Mercedes Benz before? <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, Christ is my worth. Say it again. Say, Christ is my worth. Can you shout it? Christ is my worth. Please, don't worry, blood bots. That's who I am. Don't describe me by who, by what I have. Okay. Okay, are you there? So don't be ashamed that you're not driving to church. And this is deliverance for many people. Amen. Babel system. How many of you are getting the Babel system exposed? Some of people, when they don't get job, they be short rats. You know short rats? You know short rats? Their leg not they come up for church. Pastor, I prayed in the faith convention. You gave a word of prophecy. I got the job. Enough is sweep church again. I mean, go to sweep church. I bet me they got people come who will pay them to sweep the church. Are you still here? Why you become local government chairman? Can your trustee correct you? Or oh, now you are above the law. Prosperity, listen to me. Prosperity in God is your ability to own things without them owning you. So the question is, who own who? You hear what I'm saying? I, I watched the son of a particular minister in this country in an interview yesterday. And a Chinese reporter was ask, asking him that it was on record that you were insulting someone and his mom. What's that about? 
And then the guy, son of a minister, from son of a former governor, he began to say, you know, what I told him is that I can date his mom. And I believe I can. Have you seen my car? That's what he said. So where's his sense of what? The question is, who own who? So now your car, they give you vision now. Now your house, now they give you confidence. I bet which area you they stay for this Abuja? Are you all getting this now? Say, no, 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 no. We're, we, we're the ones who live in the high class area inside GRA. We, we are the ones. It doesn't mean you're what Jack. Know your worth. Your worth is in Christ. Say, Christ is my worth. I ask you, can you just call this secret? Christ is my worth, Abi. Let me tell you something. Your worth is within, not without. Your worth is what? Your worth is where? Your worth is where? So one, one servant told his master. The master said he should accompany him to a particular event. It was a party. But he begged his master in the house. He knelt down to beg the master. He said, please, don't tell anybody I'm your servant. Let me just for once enjoy myself in a public party. Do you get it? And the master agreed. The master even gave him some of his own clothes to wear so that he will look like a big man. So when they got to the party, they sat on the table where they would put his master to. So the master did not say he is a servant. It's fine. So he was there. Then they began to eat. And then he began to pick food from the ground to eat. That's how he announced that he is a servant. The cloth on the outside. Do you understand now? The master did not say, can you meet my slave? No. They put him on the high table. He has the high clothes, but he's a slave inside. Things will not make you. So if you are here, you have made a splash to say, I know what I will do when I buy my car. Jesus is saying to you, know who you are now first. Say, Christ is my worth. Say it again. Say, Christ is my worth. Anything that determines how you feel. Anything that gives you your idea or your perception or definition of self. That's what owns you. Wear what you have to church. Just be clean. You know one of the reasons why the Jews are never materialistic? The Jews. They can own a billion dollars in the whole world. And they're still driving their car from the 1975. Why? What car does... Uh, What's Big Gates' mentor's name again? What car does Warren Buffett drive? The car he was driving since the 80s. He's not driving the latest Rolls Royce. All those money in the world. So it's poor people that have something to prove. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? You know why the Jews are never materialistic? They believe this. They say life is not a snapshot. That's their rule. How I am today does not describe the rest of my life. You got 50 years ahead of you, 60 years ahead of you. Eh? That's a lot in Miracle Market. You and anybody else should not describe your whole life by your today. What do you get? Who will you be? Jesus said, no man know it, where the wind listed from or where it is going. So is every man that is born of the Spirit. So please, stop describing yourself from the streets that you are coming from. Iyara, wherever you came from. However bad, however poor that place is, that's not your worth. Say, Christ is my worth. Say, Christ is my worth. So in the blessing system, we start by acknowledging that God is my source. And whatever God has not brought, I will not take. Whatever does not come God's way, I don't want it. As a pastor, I'm not compelled to begin to deceive my people, manipulate my people to give money to me so I can be driving black SUV. I mean, do you know those pastors' video? 
As pastor is coming to church, little video high comes down from the SUV. Eh? Christ is my worth. Now those things, the pastors who do it, they are not sinners. Oh. Amen? Amen? They are not bad people. But the moment another pastor look at them and say, I must get this thing so that it will be complete. They must video me like this, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be confirmed pastor. Are you not getting it? That's where there's a problem. There is nothing you can own, land, house, land, children, that can make you more than what God has already made you. Oh, come on, can you say with me? Say, Christ is my source. So if God is your only source, then God has a system in place to prosper you. And that's why you must begin to learn his principles. Finally, never forget, as, long as, as far as God is concerned, prosperity is about the fulfillment of his plan and purpose on the earth. Prosperity is about the fulfillment of the plans and the purpose of God on the earth. If you've been blessed, say a big amen. amen. Everyone be on your feet this afternoon now. Be on your feet and just mortar tongues under your breath. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. I want to declare two scriptures over you. Men should go bread again, not so far bring the Dharma Katesa. Zemene homes, Cobradi, Cademic home, Pratica, Tedidis, Brenda Manku, Fatata. Let's stretch your hands in front of you and pray by the Spirit in tongues. Zimenondo, Copra, Saka, Ligre, and the Monko, she Fratahas. Zemene Nagondo, Compre, de Grigidi, Shumrenda, Foka, Prade, Galeno, Cosa. The Naman to Cobon de Zobra, Dengre, get a Combra, Dica, Dele, for Monko, the Zebra, Dega, de Morabadas, and the Nongo to Cote, Breketisha, Pratical Litosa, Imros, Sabrekelas. In the name of Jesus, please look at me. When we say God is our source, I said one of the implications is that you are detached from things. And I said, there is nothing that we cannot give. God told me to give out my MacBook. I gave my MacBook out like paper. Take. It's one over a million, but take. Absolutely nothing that you cannot what? Give. Some of you will give our cars in the name of Jesus. Some of you will use landed properties to do offerings. Seeds. Say Amen. That's not when you think deep. That's when you respond by faith. Things. What is this thing that you have? And let me tell you. You pay me your feet. Let me tell you something. Some of you should take this as an instruction. Go home. And when you get home, take something that you think is a part of your heart. If that should leave your wardrobe, your heart will die. Give it. Did you hear what I said? Give it. Take that perfume. Bring it to church on Wednesday and say, take! It hurts me, but nothing controls my life. A detachment from what? From things. Nothing else can complete who Christ has completed. So, that attainment that God is my source... And absolutely nothing else can, nothing else is a source of definition, a source of worth, a source of, who never get born straight, not be babe. Eh? Shout, can you shout, shout with me this morning? Say, God is my source. I declare Numbers 14, 8 over you this morning. The Lord delights in you in the name of Jesus. The Lord brings you into a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy 2, 7, I declare over you, the Lord has blessed you greatly. In the works of your hand has he blessed you. God has brought you into a good and abundant land. I want you to shout a big amen. 
you will eat without scarcity and you will not lack any good thing in the mighty name of Jesus this month of March as you walk legitimately the spirit of the Lord is poured upon your labor the spirit of the Lord is poured upon your labor therefore you shall see increase increase in your productivity increase in your profitability oh paths are open to you doors are open to you hearts are open to you men open themselves to you in this week you will come into privilege informations information rather information about the trade secret of this earth men will introduce you captains of industry will open doors to you they will open doors that can only be opened from within to you in the mighty name of Jesus Oh, Salt City Online on Ground, I pronounce you blessed. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Can you give the Lord a big praise where you are? That's not a big praise. Give the Lord a big, 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 big praise.